Oh boy, oh boy. I've just completely messed up all of my settings. Uh, I tried streaming today and I was pretty happy with how it went, but the quality was kind of lackluster. So I've tried to fix that and in doing so I've kind of messed up the what I do for my um for my YouTube channel. So hopefully this is an overall improvement. It looks good in the samples that I tried, so promises, promises, promises. Alright, so screen game between Maru and Effort. <clears throat> I said I was going to get around to doing this, and I finally have. And I think the last part of this kind of long extended episode is going to be Byung versus, I think it's True on Frost. <clears throat> the TVZ build that Byung uses and it's also a biomech build so we'll see how that works out tomorrow but today we're going to take a look at Maro's build he opens up with an 888 very very El Chize of him uh, it's a pretty stand or not standard it's a pr yeah I would say it's a pretty standard cheese it, I think it works better than 2x because it allows you to transition out of it you don't need to necessarily kill the hatchery if you kill enough drones, you can delay the Zerg's economy while getting your own command center up long enough so that you can kind of create an even game or a slight advantage depending on how many drone kills you can get. Like Maru here, uh, he hasn't gotten that many drone kills because Effort is a freaking god at micro, but he, if you look at the worker count right now, he, it's 15 workers to 14 so well now it's 14 to 14 and now it's 13 to 14 but now every second that passes by Maru is going to be mining more than effort and Maru also forced out a spine crawler and effort can't really stop making zerglings either until speed is cl well I say that and then he start he st makes two more drones. He's just trying to squeeze out as many drones as possible, but realistically, you can't stop you can't stop making zerglings. He did make the spine crawler though, so that gives a lot of zoning ability for these reapers. Uh and it really limits the amount that they can dance around the mineral lines, but all overall Mars at 17 workers and efforts on 12. So that made so like even though this rush didn't kill effort it did enough damage to put Maru in a pretty good position economically and it forced out a spine crawler as well which is a drone plus 100 minerals so I would say that this 888 rush has worked out pretty well and now we see Maru he's just scouting he doesn't wanna like you can't really scout with your reapers cause this will happen uh... what I like to do here is if I have like three reapers or multiple reapers and I know that the zerg player is going to have zerglings on the ramp because I've seen him make a lot Maru saw the effort made a lot of zerglings in response to his 888 then if you pop up one reaper and have the other two on hold position you can kind of fire and kill like some zerglings and your reaper will get pretty weak but you can usually kill one zergling before popping back down and losing vision of the high ground it's just kind of a cute little micro tactic. Uh, we see Maru. He ends up scouting that there is only one drone on gas. Effort is so far, it looks like he's going for just speed and he's going to drone back up. And if we still look at the worker count, Maru is still pretty far ahead. I believe he has, okay, he does not have an, no, yeah, I believe he has one mule as well. I don't know if that gets included into the worker count or not, but we can just assume, okay, yeah, so there's the mule, but we can assume that Maru's economy is better than efforts and that this rush has paid off. And Maru gets the full scout in with the barracks as well. Effort, he's getting the roach warren, he puts it down after the barracks leaves, but in this in the meantime, Maru is kind of like, he's in a pretty good position, and all he has to do is not take too much economic damage from this roach attack. Excuse me, sorry about that. I streamed for five hours today in a row, and it was pretty tiring. But, um, this is kind of Maru's reaction out of an 888. I think if you 
don't do an 888 and if it's just a normal reaper expand with this build then you'll have the reactor you'll have the hellions out by now and then you'll build the starport and then you'll have the barracks and make a tech lab for that for the starport and the cloak banshees and then you'll build a second factory or no you'll have three command centers and you'll go cloak banshee hellion banshee but then you'll build a second factory and then you'll get blue flame really fast for it so what this does is having the tech lab out for the banshee and also having the blue flame is kind of like a pretty it give like there's the blue flame opening which gives you aggression with blue flame hellions and then there's the hellion banshee opening which gives you aggression from the cloak banshee power and what Maru has done with this build is he's kind of combined the two to create a very powerful mech opening by having both Banshees and Hellions out on the field. And having three orbital command centers as well. That's very important. I don't think he'd be able to do this off of two, otherwise it would be extremely all-in. But having the third orbital means that he can transition out of this. And he can kind of apply some mega pressure to... Uh, the Zerg player and at the same time be super safe because he's getting Hellion Banshee and he's getting Blue Flame as well. So as we see here this pretty scary attack coming by effort and Mars gonna hold it relatively well. I mean he sees it a bit late. He couldn't have seen it any later. The Roaches are already at his ramp. Mar immediately evacuates his main natural because he knows he can't hold it and he's basically gonna fight Against big attacks like this, sometimes it's just better to give up an area which you can't defend. He couldn't defend the natural, so he's going up to the main. And fighting this on this big, or kind of this small ramp, has a big surface area. Like, it lines up the roaches so that the Hellions can do extra damage against them. And kind of clean them up faster. And it's kind of like in Lord of the Rings, the two towers, when... The Yurkai are at Helm's Deep, and the Rohan, Rohanians, the Ro, the, the Rohirrim. That's it. The Rohirrim try to defend Helm's Deep. Uh, the Yurkai, pro they, are probably close to like a thousand died trying to go up the small gate, uh, because there was just a big choke, and like all the units were funneled in. Like, they, the. Yurkai outnumbered the Rohirrim like 10 to 1. There were only like 300 Rohirrim and there were 10,000 Yurkai. But they still managed... Well, they, honestly they won because Gandalf came. But my point is that you want to bring the defense up to this little choke point because it makes it a lot easier to defend than trying to keep your natural alive. And we saw Maru scanned over here at the natural to check if it was going to be a Roach Baneling all-in. And he saw that there were gas added and maybe even the lair if it was built at the natural as well so he knows that this isn't an all in that the effort is droning up behind it as well so Mar cleans that up pretty decently he's still ahead in workers which is nice he still has the advantage in tech which is also nice and this is a pretty standard or a pretty even game after from all things considered don't be fooled by all the tricky openings that happened, the 888, the Roach Link pressure, this game is still an even game. So Maru, now with the two Banshees, he's going to be poking around. Uh, there's no longer any need for the Banshees to stay at the natural, so he's just going to poke around see if he can get any drone kills. He gets three, which, are ver which is very nice. Effort pulls his drones back though, and then Maru goes for the Queens here, which... Uh, he ends up losing one Banshee because he kind of got flanked by the Queen and the overseer like he didn't see the over where the overseer was morphing so he loses a banshee which is not the best deal in the world but he was able to kill a queen not really that great for a banshee but he was also able to kill a couple drones and kind of see the tech or lack of tech that effort had available so what Maru does, he gets two Banshees and then a Viking out of his starport, and then he stops using it. And he uses the Blue Flame Hellions kind of as a second, pr second pronged aggression. And he gets a good amount of drones from this attack, which is nice. Uh, he would have gotten more if it was just circlings, but effort made roaches. 
And Effort knows that Mar is going mech because he saw the gas was taken really early and all he's seen is blue flame hellions and banshees. I mean, he can he still probably needs to confirm it by seeing the factors, but he can make a pretty safe assumption that Effort is going mech. Or that Mar is going mech. And Mar scans right now because the two banshees and the blue flame hellions that were doing damage, their second purpose is to scout uh, what kind of tech is coming out so like if fast mutas came out they would have dealt with the banshees or if there were like even more roaches and he saw hydras pop out then he would know it's roach hydra but he doesn't know what's going on he does know that there was no tech in the natural because like he didn't see any tech in the natural so he didn't know what was going on so he knows that the only other place that there's going to be tech is in the main and he scans in the main and sees a spire so this is very important because it dictates tomorrow now that he needs to make about four Thors I think that's the good number tomorrow just make four factories I think I saw two on the production tab and he's making a siege tank and two hellions at a time that's interesting I have to recount it in his bed <sighs> sorry I'm really tired but I wanted to do this tonight and upload it before I went to sleep uh so kind of like the biomech style that we're seeing here uh, one two three okay so he only has three factories yeah I guess he'll I guess he only has three factories I was good because it seems to be that normally you make three factories you have two tech labs and a reactor and then you make you start transitioning transitioning into bio one of these tech labs is for the starport the other one, yeah, an effort sees that it's going to be mech. One of the tech labs is for the starport, the other one is for the barracks. So right now, Maru, he made a round of siege tanks. I think he made a round of siege tanks because he did scout the roach. Or he, scout, he saw the roach and the spire. So effort could have easily made a round of roaches instead of making mutalisks. And Maru's scanning there again because he's like, why haven't the Mutalisks come yet? So that's why he built the Siege Tanks first. Because against an initial batch of Mutalisks, you can hold off, you can hold them off with very minimal defense. With just like a handful of turrets spread out strategically positioned throughout each of your bases. Until you have the Thor count to shoo away the higher number of Mutalisks. So Maru built these Siege Tanks because he knew that the Spire wasn't done yet there was enough time to build a set of siege tanks and then build a set of Thors before actually having to worry about the Mutalisks. Very good play by him. And this prevents him from dying from a roach attack and like kind of a fake Mutalisk because like you scout the spot. You scout one tech and then the Zerg player goes another tech can be a game ender. So now we see Maru, he's getting the stim upgrade and he's getting one engineering bay as well. Actually, I think he has two. I think he was getting one now, and he got one before. One interesting thing to note about Maru's style is that, yeah, so he had one engineering bay, and now he's getting a second one. So it seems that the prevalent style for going biomech is to get one armory and two engineering bays. Uh, sorry, I had to take a drink of water. We saw effort or we saw fantasy in the fantasy versus life game we saw fantasy hide the engineering bays kind of like split them up so that it didn't look like or if the zerg wasn't paying special attention to the engineering bays like counting them and why would he if he already scouts the bunch of factories then it just makes it harder to scout so the my, my only problem with maru doing this having the two engineering barriers here is that if effort did scout that it would be easy to kind of identify what Maru is doing he's gonna be doing a biomech kind of style if the engineering bays were spread out like maybe one in the natural one in the main it becomes a lot harder for effort to piece the puzzle pus piece the puzzle pieces together <laughs> that came out weird anyways so Maru he's ending an explosion of barracks so I found that from all the games I've been playing and watching it's usually about five to six barrackses at once. Like you don't add like two and then two and then three like in a normal, in a normal setting. Like in a, when you're normally going bio, you add on five to six at once. You really need to, you really want to catch 
them out of position with the text switch. And I just want to note here, Maru, he the only difference in his build is he's opted to make one tech lab, or he had a tech lab on his starport instead of reactor, so he doesn't have medevacs. Well, what he does have are banshees, and he's going to have the option to make a raven too when he pushes out, and that'll be useful for clearing creep spread. Auto turrets are nice because it screws up pathing uh, for zerg units, and PDD is also nice against mutalisks and hydralisks. Uh, I just want to note that Maru, he did end up making the three Thors, even though Effort has not gotten a single mutalisk. He still got the Maru still got the three Thors, and then he went back to making a round of siege tanks. That's kind of how you need to play this kind of style: is that you have the ability to make the ultimate army composition, so you kind of have to think like a Protoss player in TVP. Uh, when you make Colossi, then after that, like you know that the Terran, if you make Colossi as a Protoss player, you know the Terran is going to be making Vikings. So the next thing that you want to be making is High Templar because that counters Vikings and it forces the Terran to make kind of like switch into Ghosts as well. So by so by building these kinds of units or having kind of like an even unit composition, Maru has five siege tanks, which is it seems to be the magic number to have to defend against uh, any kind of aggression like Roach Bailing, Roach Hydra, just Speed Roach in general. And he also has the three Banshees to defend against that as well. And he also has three Thors to defend against any Mutalisk harassment or any possible Mutalisk that might sneak up on him in a surprise text switch of any sort. He has about one Thor per base, which is a good number, again, too. And we see Maru, his fourth base is almost done as well. So he took that fourth base super early. This, is, What that tells us is that this is not designed to be a three base timing push. It's designed to be a four base timing push. So that you want to get your fourth base out as fast as possible. And then uh, kind of push after you've secured your fourth base. Not before. Maybe during securing the fourth base. Kind of like the best offense is a good defense. I mean the best defense is a good offense. LOL. So, we see here that Maru, after he made the Banshees, he switched into a reactor to make, or so that he, now he has a reactor starport. I think the one thing that I'd like to have seen Maru do better is to make a second starport so that he had the option, uh, or even like t have three starports total so that he has the option to switch into air so like he can get that Raving and Viking count up faster. Or he can make ravens, I mean vikings and medevacs, if the situation called for. I think really this game, his limited use, his only having one starport really limited him this game. So as we see here, Maru's maxing out. He has uh, one thing that can be, this, can, this attack could have been avoided if Maru had a sensor tower over here. And then a siege tank also sieged up. Because the Roach Hydra cannot reach the Siege Tank, but the Siege Tank can hit the Roach Hydra. So they, he would lose a lot of units if Effort tried to break the rocks with the Siege Tank there. But Maru just didn't know that this was happening. So this kind of caught him off guard, and it's good on the Effort's part. Because against this kind of a Biomech army, a really common response for the Zerg player is to do a bunch of counterattacks. Because they can't really straight up engage in this against this kind of army without losing or without taking a very cost inefficient trade. So we see Maru, his entire army, it was at the 4th, and then he saw that these rocks were dying, so na he had to quickly double time back to his natural. And now that this is opened up, it allows Effort another attack, an alternate attack path. As we see here, Effort, he's going to be, he's like over here in this vicinity of the map, and what he does is he goes to the 4th and pressures it, and then he goes to the natural and pressures it. And he does that continuously throughout the rest of the game. And having this natural exposed is causes Maru a lot of headache and a lot of trouble. At this point in the game, I think Maru's in a fantastic position right now. He's definitely ahead. He is maxed out. He has four bases against the Zerg's five bases. So they're about economically even, but Maru's had his base up, I think, faster than the Zerg player usually should take their fifth base, so I would give the economic edge to Maru. I would also say that Maru's tech is pretty even as well. I believe he's on 2-2 upgrades for his Bioforce, and the Roach Hydra is on 2-2. And he also has plus two weapons almost done researching as well. 
And he also has four Vikings. I really like how Maru made four Vikings instead of Medivacs. Because as soon as he knew that it was Roach Hydra, and I'm pretty sure he scanned for a hive timing, uh, he started making Vikings instead of Medivacs. I believe these are going to be his first two Medivacs, so he made two rounds of Vikings beforehand. And you really need Vikings against Roach Hydra to shoo away the Vipers. The correct response against Viper play is Vikings. I believe it, I think Vikings do like 24 damage, 12 per shot, and they do two attacks against Vipers. And then like you minus the minus two armor for Vipers, but I... Or maybe more, but I'm pretty sure, like 99% sure, I'd have to double check, but you need five Vikings to one shot a Viper, so that's kind of just the magic number to keep the Vipers under control. Maybe having like six or seven in case the Zerg player, and as we'll see soon, effort yanking the Vikings to try to limit the count. Uh, I really like how effort focuses on the Vikings as well, because not only does that make the Vipers more effective, but it also takes away a valuable unit that Maru needs to defend against this inevitable Corruptor Broodlord switch that uh, that effort is going into. And one of the reasons why Maru struggles so heavily against this unit composition is I believe because he takes he makes three more barracks so he's going for a very okay so Maru's only on one one upgrades so his upgrades are behind but I think it's a mistake by him to add three more barracks against this unit composition because uh, barracks aren't really good against hive tech units such as infestors, such as vipers, such as broodlords, such as corruptors. The th kind of units that you need to counter those are from the starport and Maru only has one starport right now. And he's on four bases, so he can definitely afford to make more starports if he so chose, but he consciously chose not to make starports and tried to win the game a different way. And I think that's what's going to cost him against, uh, against effort. And we can just highlighting here the importance of having this open. It really creates an aggressive alternate attack path, and this really messes up Maru. Like, he's ahead right now, but this is going to put a big chunk into his otherwise pretty big bank that he saved up and this attack I like it it's not a bad attack uh, effort only has two vipers so he can't really he doesn't really have enough to like he can abduct maybe two siege tanks or blinding cloud one or two uh, Maru has nine siege tanks he's making two at a time so he's really gotten the right unit composition to counter the roach hydra viper composition of efforts However, effort kind of uh, effort didn't want to stay on Roach Hydra Viper, so he makes Broodlords, which I really really like by him because Broodlords, it's either Brood well, Broodlords are kind of like the direct counter to Siege Tanks. I would say Swarm Hosts are a soft counter to Siege Tanks because they force a stalemate because Siege Tanks can actually kill a Locust before they do damage, but Broodlords, they straight up do damage to Siege Tanks, and like their units are melee range, so Siege Tanks will friendly fire on your units as well. So Broodlords are really, really good against Siege Tanks. And the counter to Broodlords is Starport tech, Vikings and Ravens. If, he ha if Maru had, let's say, like five Ravens right now, uh, those... Broodlords would have been dead from Hunter Seeker missiles in an instant. Or if he had like, if he had more than one starport, he could have made more than two Vikings at a time. He he has one Viking out right now, and that Viking is not long in this world. So essentially, Maru is fighting off seven swarm hosts with Marines and Thors, and only a handful too. And as we see, this is not working out very well for him. And Effort's counterattack did a crap ton of damage. Maru's bank is immediately gone. He can't remax either. He's lost a significant amount of workers. He's lost about 30-ish. And his natural, he has no mining there. His third, he has very little mining there. His fourth is now his only remaining base left. And he still has a significant army. But at this point, his economy is kind of in shambles. Mostly because of Effort opening up that choke and also Maru letting effort open up that choke w way and then doing a bunch of counter attacks with cheap zerglings as well and then effort just remaxes out on 
a bunch of hydralisks or whatever he needs to max out on to counter Maru's unit composition. So against this kind of like mass hydralisk uh, broodlord composition, the hydralisks are obviously good against Vikings which and Ravens which counter the broodlords, but they suck very very hard against siege tanks. And the broodlords are kind of designed to counter the siege tanks and the vipers as well. And see the vipers like Maru got two volleys off on those vipers but because he didn't have the right numbers mostly because he didn't have the right starport count he wasn't able to one shot those vipers and those vipers could have been one shotted and dealt with but instead effort has the time to abduct them into the hydralisks and kill the vipers off okay and also here effort it, just highlighting how good of a player he is hides one zergling there so maru can't even uh, land his natural back where it's supposed to be. I mean, Effort, I think, played this very, very well. And Maru, Maru's one big mistake here, because, like, the goal of having the biomech composition is to have an ultimate army, so that you can also, and also so that you can tech into Sky Terran as well. And the one thing that Maru didn't do in this game was tech into Sky Terrans. We saw him make three additional barrackses after ha after his seven total barrackses were made. So he was going, he was playing a much heavier bio style instead of adding the star ports and going into a sky Terran style. And so he wouldn't be able to create the right kind of unit composition to deal with Effort's unit composition. And so as we see here, Effort has seven, eight broodlords. He has. 25 Hydralisks and he has 5 Vipers. And what does Maru have? He has 5 Vikings and 1 Medivac. And a bunch of Marauders and Marines, which frankly aren't going to do anything against this amount of Broodlords, Hydralisks, and Vipers. So, we can see here if Maru did have additional Starports, he could have had a higher Viking count. He could have had more Medivacs to drop around the map, to, because that's also a good way of dealing against this army. Uh, Broodlords are very immobile, so are Vipers, and they're only good when clumped up together in a big death ball army, so dropping could also tear tear uh, effort apart. But instead, Maru has a bunch of bio forces, and he's forced to fight Marines against Broodlords. And effort kind of takes a, I would say, not the best engagement. He still ends up chipping away at Maru's army, although not as cost efficiently as he would like. But he has killed the important fourth base of Maru. So Maru no longer has four bases. He only has three bases. His main is mined out. His natural is going to be mined out soon. He only has 38 workers. So he, can he can't even support two fully mining bases. And effort here is on five bases here. And Maru, he's kind of like... This is all he has left going for him is his big army. And we see that by him taking out that base from effort that's good by Maru but uh, effort just has a bigger bank he traded units better because he had a better unit composition and that mostly stems from the fact that Maru only has one starport right now and uh, he's just in a good position because he also opened up the natural base to kind of make it more effective or more counterattacks more effective and we see here, Effort, he's still doing counterattacks, even if it's just two Zerglings, it forces Maru out of position ever so slightly. Uh, it's more about stretching your opponent's multitasking thin. And now we see here, those Vipers just evaporated against this Viking count. Here, I'll play it back just so you guys can see it. But if you pay attention to the Vikings versus Vipers, this is what it looks like if you have the proper unit composition with this army. So one, two down, just like that. And the Vipers, they're no more... They did basically nothing in that fight, and they just died for free. That's what a fight is supposed to look like if you have the right unit composition to deal with the Zerg player. And that's what Maru had in this situation. Now, Effort, he's going into Swarm Hosts, which I like. Uh, another counter to Maru's army force. So Effort is basically countering Maru's army with everything, like... He, he recognizes that Maru has no sky capability right now, and so he's building things that you need Sky Terran to deal with. He initially built Broodlords, Vipers, and Hydralisks, uh, more importantly the Broodlords and the Vipers, and you need 
uh, starport tech to deal with that. You need ravens, you need vikings, mostly vikings to deal with the vipers, and also ravens to deal with the broodlords as well. And you also need ravens to deal with the swarm hosts as well. And Maru does not have money for it because he did not invest at all in starport tech. I'm not going to say that broodlord or that like bio is good is okay against swarm hosts because they can destroy waves very quickly with stim and with hellbats to tank some damage in the front line it's not cost efficient but it can be done and it can also they can also outmaneuver the swarm host locusts as well so if the locusts like decided to go over here and maru's army was over here then the swarm hosts are completely useless for another 20 seconds so this army composition by maru is kind of a soft counter to the swarm hosts. I'm not going to even say it's a soft counter because swarm hosts are still pretty damn good against what Maru has. Uh, Maru just does not have enough healing capabilities. He only has like two medevacs out on the map. One is doing a drop over here and the other one is over here kind of just being fancy with micro. So the overall theme of this game is not having the right unit composition and what kind of unit composition would be the correct one it would be the starport units and if he had if he had more vikings the vipers wouldn't have done that but maru's viking count has been reduced back to one and he has zero ravens whereas effort has four broodlords and ten swarm hosts so that's kind of why maru end, ends up losing this game and he had he did have an advantage earlier on in the game and he did he basically had an advantage up until the point that effort built an army composition that countered mars so effort went into roach hydra or he went into roaches then he went to, to roach hydra and then he went up to roach hydra viper and then he went up to roach hydra or mostly viper hydra and then broodlord and maru was fine up until the broodlords and the vipers started appearing when they it's like vipers you need the viking count to deal with them mar didn't have the viking count he didn't have the production for it mostly and so the vipers were able to do some damage and then the broodlords really did a lot more damage by taking out maru's fourth base that was a very important blow to his economy and yeah that's it's like broodlords you obviously need vikings to deal with them maru only has two vikings in his entire army right now and they're about to get yoinked by these vipers and now maru has he can't deal with this kind of a unit composition that effort has because he only has one starport if he had like 10 more vikings then he would have been in a much better position he would have been able to snipe off the broodlords and the vipers and still trade pretty cost efficiently against the hydra banelings because he has siege tanks and bio force behind it but he just doesn't have the right unit composition and efforts doing a good job of he's putting in a good effort ha 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 of limiting mars unit composition and preventing him from building up the proper one to deal with efforts death ball army that he currently has and we see him doing that by like yoinking the vikings like you can't yoink five vikings because if you yoink a viking you get close enough like if you abduct it you get close enough vikings have the same range i believe as abduct so if you try to abduct a viking you usually can kill if you can kill like a viper and you can one shot a viper with five vikings i believe or six probably six because if one gets yoinked then it doesn't attack the viking so if one gets yoinked and then you like trade a viking for a viper then that's a very good trade for you because vipers are very expensive vikings are relatively cheap units but just losing viking after viking against these vipers and really having no he really has no answer to the army that effort has well that's just a bit it's a pickle it's a rough pickle he's stuck in a pickle in a hard place so i feel like i'm a robot kind of just like talking over and over about what went wrong and what's happening tomorrow and why he's losing the game it ends in an in an it ends in an inevitable defeat by for Maru, but he could have the important thing to 
understand here is that he could have won the game if he had the correct unit composition and biomech is all about having the correct unit composition so if he did like when he was on four bases if he did tech into sky tech uh getting ravens vikings and even banshees banshees maybe not so much not really that great against hydralisks then he would have been in a much better position to trade cost efficiently and still end up the game would have been prolonged a lot longer and he like Effort didn't really have a bank. He had a lot of gas, but he didn't have a lot of minerals at the end. If Maru traded more efficiently, Effort wouldn't have even been maxed out. He most likely wouldn't have had a bank at all, and he was only on five bases as well. So Maru was trading cost of. He was trading okay, but he could have been trading. He needed to be trading a lot better to win the game and he could he could have done you trade better when you have the correct unit composition to deal with the zergs and he didn't have that so <clears throat> I hope I stressed it enough having the correct unit composition to counter the zerg death ball and you have that because you're going bio mech play here you can get both bio you can get mech and you also have a good transition into sky tech too because you've been you've opened mech you go into bio and then you can transition into sky turn and that's what i like about the styles because it gives you literally every single unit that you can make from the terran arsenal to deal with what the zerg has and it really gives you the tools to create the ultimate death ball army that the zerg should be freaking afraid of so the last game I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it tomorrow, is going to be Byung, between Byung versus, I think, True. And it's going to take a look at kind of like Byung having the right unit composition to deal with True's. I'm pretty sure the Zerg's True. But to deal with the Zerg's unit composition, and as a result of having that good unit composition, he's able to win the game. So that wraps it up for tonight. And I. Oh! Uh, I'd like to also say that I plan on streaming tomorrow. Uh, it's already Wednesday, so it's 1.22 a.m. here, so I guess I plan on streaming Wednesday, May 21st. Um, I haven't decided what time yet. I want to aim for maybe around during the day. I might be going out at night, but if I'm not, then I will definitely stream in the evening. Uh, for example, today I streamed a little bit from 3 to 4 and then some more from uh, five, or yeah, like 5.30 to 11. So I'll definitely try to stream sometime tomorrow for a long period of time as well. And if not, then I, I'll make an announcement from my stream when I plan on streaming again. But I will try to create a constant schedule. So... Yeah, and hopefully I'll be able to fix all the quality settings tomorrow as well. I'm st still going through kind of like a setting the stream up and getting a schedule and going through the whole thing to make it a part of a routine of my daily life. So just bear with me and hopefully see you guys tomorrow on my stream.